for God to magnify your name and to lift you up. God, because we come, oh, Father God, to, to glorify you and to exalt you. God, we thank you for this, 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 this ministry. God, we thank you for the word that goes forth. Come now, Holy Spirit. Fill this place with your glory. Let the train fill the temple. Let your, your, your glory fill the temple. Let your power fill the temple. Let your anointing fill the temple. And we will bless your name, O oh God. All over this place, if you would, just lift up your hands all over the building. And with the fruit of your lips, begin to magnify your God. Fill this house with praise. Fill this house with adoration. Fill this house. Lift him up right now. Push past whatever was going on today. Push past the traffic. Push past the issues. Push past any of the circumstances and lift up his name in this place. Father, we love you and we exalt you. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and thank God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Could you do me a favor just on this side and this side? Wave on this side and let them know. I'm glad to see you tonight. Come on, stand on your feet. It's praise and worship. I know you might be a little tired in your body, but God is still good. If you praise him, he'll give you strength. Hey, if you lift him up, he'll give you strength. Come on. He'll give you joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As pastor would say, I submit to you that our God is good. Hey, I said, I submit to you that our God is good. Anybody know that he's good? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? Da, 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 da. How you love me? Hey, it's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Who am I say? When I call, when I call is, it true, oh is it true that you are thinking of me? How you, love me? How you love me? It's amazing. It's amazing. Say it again. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I am a friend of God. Say I am a friend of God. Everybody say it.
Everybody, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. I double dare you just to lift up a sound of worship right there. Come on, come on. Come on, everybody. Worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him and yeah. Can we sing an old one that goes like this? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell you, oh, Lord, I love you. Hey, more than anything. Watch, let's go. Everybody, I love you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. I yeah, yeah. And you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I know. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Hey. Uh,
something right now. I love you, Jesus. Everybody say, I love you, Jesus. Anybody really love him? I love you, Jesus. Anybody really love him? I love you, Jesus. How you came and died for my sins. I love you. And just for that. Begin to worship God right there. And just worship God right there. Come on, just there's an old song that says, They said this I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I. Just wish somebody said, I love you, I love you. Hey, I love you. And then they had another one that says this, they said this in the old church, they said, My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. And they said it like this, you pay the price for me. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. 
We say thank you for everything you're doing. We say thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your peace. Father, when we all take a look back over our lives individually, Father, we know you love us. So we give the love back to you as best as we know how. Creating us a clean heart. Renewing us a right spirit. Forgive us for every sin, every iniquity, every struggle, every idol, every trespass, every transgression. Wash us with the power of your spirit. Wash us with the anointing of your word. Wash us with the blood of Jesus. Wash us, vindicate us through the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are here. You're so welcome to increase your presence. Come. Holy Spirit, do it. In Jesus' name. All the saints of God say amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you, praise team. I feel God. You may be seated. I feel God. Lord, have mercy. One more time, y'all. Just one more time. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Make it personal, y'all. Because you came for me. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind. So belongs to you because you yes, you did. In yeah, that's why I lift you up. Y'all, I feel the love of God. I promise you, and I don't want to cut it off, but I really feel the love of God. And somebody needs this. Through all the trials and the tribulations that life may afford us, somebody needs to know. When he manifests his presence of love, he's trying to let you know he loves you. Maybe you can't understand it all, but he loves you.
you, Jesus. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, let's get more, let's get going, let's get going, let's get going. <laughs> one, the one thing that the presence does, even when it's love, I don't know about you, but it drives me to repentance. Like within myself. Like, I'm like, God clean me and I, and I know you've already done it but clean me some more because the more his presence gets closer to you the more filthy you begin to understand that your soul is and it's and it's and it's and I'm telling y'all the manifested presence of God when you get a real drink it is something I can promise you that you will never forget and it is something that you will be in high pursuit with at all times God, I got to be honest, I wish I was at home in my closet right now. <laughs> like, like, oh, yeah. how he loves, he loves us. Hey. Oh, how he loves us. Hey. Oh, how he the transforming chamber right now you may may be released may be released hallelujah thank you for your love 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the presence of God is our number one pursuit at Transforming Faith. We not crazy, we just invoke. We just invoke the presence. Because one of the worst things that you can do is start reading the word, listening to the word, and hearing the word, but the presence be absent of the word. The Bible says that the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. It makes no sense for you to get principles without presence. Because if you get principles without presence, it will make you religious. I promise you, it will. You will know what to do, but you won't know how to execute on how to do it. You need the spirit of the living God on every single thing that you do. So this is the reason why we have worship before Bible study start. Because we need the brewing and the manifested presence to get on the principles as the principles go forth. Because the principles with the presence is the thing that brings life. Fresh life, new life. The freshness of peace comes through the presence. The freshness of love comes through the presence. Everything comes through the manifested presence. And when you tell him who he is, when you worship from a place of purity, sometimes he just invades the room because he's God. Good evening, TLCC. Good evening. Good evening to everybody that's under the sound of my voice. Good evening. How are y'all doing? Everybody good, everybody good. I promise you, I don't, I, I, I really, tonight, I, I promise you, I feel like it's supposed to be a prayer service. I, I really do. With this right now, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm asking the Lord. I promise you, I'm sitting here asking the Lord right now, should I teach it? Should I just open this up for a prayer service? Because I feel a, I, I, I promise you, I feel a, a riveting, I feel a stirring right now. Like, seriously, I feel waves in my face right now. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, Hear me, 
hear me, hear me. I'm thoroughly convinced and fully persuaded that it is the anointing that delivers you. But it is truth that frees you. Did you, did you catch that? It's the anointing that delivers you. But truth frees you. The blood of Jesus will deliver you. But truth frees you. The name will deliver you. But truth will free you. It's two different things going on. Right? One thing is deliverance. Another thing is freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the Lord shows up to manifest his presence for deliverance. But then when the truth comes, it anchors in freedom. Deliverance can be a one-time event, but freedom is a lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. And just every now and then, we're getting a lot of truth. And just every now and then, I just truly believe he wants some folks to get free. I'm going to teach half, half of tonight and then after I'm going to teach about 20 to 30 minutes and I'm going to open this up for prayer. I just really feel like I, I, I'm, I feel a stirring and I feel I really feel I feel the spirit of the living God and we're about to talk about the Holy Spirit. So all that's about to happen is, is about he's about to increase. Right. He's already in the building. And then when you start talking about the roles and the function of who he is, all he does is increases his presence. I just ask y'all to stay on the same rhythm in heart right where we are right now. Stay in the same rhythm and heart. And if you know you need prayer right now, prepare yourself. I believe God is about to break some stuff off somebody on tonight. I believe God is about to get somebody free on tonight. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I, I do not know why, but I'm hearing something. And I've been hearing it for the last two minutes. I'm hearing the phrase unclean thoughts. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing the phrase unclean thoughts. And I believe the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to set the captives free. And one of the things that you, the captives may need to get free of is unclean thoughts. Strongholds of unclean thoughts that's running through your mind continually. Every now and then, the Lord just moves through his, in his sovereignty and he breathes on you. And the unclean thoughts that you don't feel like you can get rid of, may I submit to you, he will remove them. But this is what you have to understand about that in deliverance. God sometimes deliver you in your sovereignty, in his sovereignty. But when you start asking for freedom, you got a responsibility. If he removed the unclean thoughts, you can't keep putting unclean thoughts in your mind. Bible says in, in Proverbs 4 and 23, guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. And so the gateways, Reuben, to my heart is my eyes my ears, my mouth, all of these are ways for the unclean seeds of thoughts to get in my mind. Mark the fourth chapter, Jesus says, the sower soweth the word. When the sower is sowing the word, the four type of souls are four representation of four different type of hearts. Are you with me? Yeah, you got the stony heart. You got me so when the word is sown, immediately when it's, stone, when it's sown right then because your heart is full of stone, the birds can just come and snatch it. The enemy just come snatch it when the word is being sown, right? You got the next type of heart that ain't got much root. This means your heart, it ain't, it ain't deep enough with truth. So the word can go in, but because of everything that is going around, right, it just comes in and just, just chokes it out. You, you got me. You got me. The next type, of, the next type it was sown amongst thorns. Because of the cares of the world and everything else, may I submit to you the word can't take root. Watch this. The Bible says that it takes root, but, but it don't last because of persecution. Everything comes and it begins to steal the word. Now watch this. Watch this. By revelation knowledge, the Holy Spirit showed me something. It says Jesus said that the sower sowed the word, and it's a representation of the preacher sowing the word into your heart. May I submit to you that if the preacher can sow the word into your heart, Facebook can sow unclean thoughts into your heart. That's right. That's right. Instagram and YouTube and foolishness can sow unclean things into your heart. What happens, Reuben, is when that happens is we keep watering it with a rabbit hole, right? Can I, can I give you an example? Everybody see what's going on with P. Diddy right now. And some of you see what's going on. You kept chasing this. You kept chasing this. You kept chasing this. Kept chasing. You trying to get to the end because you want to figure out everything that's going on. You don't even realize that you're sowing more unclean stuff in you. Um, this is the Holy Spirit now. I promise you I ain't know what it is. And so the enemy tricks you on how to take responsibility to sow unclean things in you. 
And then when depression come, when anxiety come, when all of this stuff come, you got so much stuff built up in you, you don't even know how to think in another way. Because you taught yourself how to think. Romans 12, 1 and 2, brother and I beseech you by the mercies of God, you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world. Don't be chasing all that stuff. Continually, because you are feeding yourself the wrong thing. Nature says whatsoever you feed, that's what will live. Whatsoever you starve, that's what will die. Nature says that. Whatever you feed, that's what's going to live. But whatever you starve, that's what's going to die. God is not responsible for your starving. You are. Are you with me? Yes, yeah, starve gossip. Starve confusion. Starve frustration. Starve this stuff. Starve it. If you don't starve it, then you can't stay free. You are coming to church every single Sunday. The Holy Spirit move like he moving tonight. And he going to free you. And then all of a sudden you go right back because you don't starve. What's going on? And what make any sense? Then you say God don't love you. God ain't with you. The devil is a lie. You've been deceived. You feeding yourself the wrong stuff. Are you with me? This is why transformation ain't a one time event. You cannot, you cannot think for one second that walking with God is event based. Meaning, I'm going to pray so I can get this breakthrough for this event. No, you got to do this every single day. This is your faith walk. So you walking by faith every single day. The reason why we can't win in God is because we think this is an event. We come to church on Sunday for an event, but we don't walk with God as a lifestyle. I feel the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? And what you thinking is it's not normal, but everybody who ain't walking around you right now, I guarantee you they're in a rat race. They're in anxiety. They in confusion. They in frustration. They up today, down tomorrow, looking for their purpose, hating God the next day. Oh, listen, all that. He says that the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But you got to have life daily. When you really tasted peace, it costs too much to play with your mind. It costs too much to play with your future. It costs too much. I ain't coming out here to teach in order to light y'all up. Hear me and hear me well when I'm teaching, I'm feeding me too. I'm up every morning on morning prayer because I know when I don't do it, I feel the difference. Are you with me? It ain't just for you because the voice of the Lord comes through too. It comes through me to me. It's a boomerang effect. Yeah, and some of the things you, you teaching and preaching, you're going to be tried by this stuff. Don't think because everybody running and shouting ain't paying no price. This cost. Are you with me? The enemy attacks me the same way he attacks you. He just attacks at a different level. He just attacks in a different way. And if I don't present my body as a living sacrifice, I will be preaching and I will be making myself, the apostle Paul says, you make yourself a castaway. You preach in self-control, but you ain't self-control. You preach in humility, but you ain't humility. You preach in this, but you ain't this. Are you with me? I ain't just talking to y'all. This is what this is what God is calling. He's looking for a set of people that he can fill up and overflow. Hear me. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. God has spoke to me and he wants to do overflow. He don't just want to be Jehovah Jireh. He wants to show a group of people that he's El Shaddai. The God that is more than enough. Everybody knew him as Jehovah Jireh. 
many people don't talk about him being El Shaddai. Can I bless you to be the blesser? We all concerned about a one-time blessing. When God says, I want to make a group of people that I can trust to be blessers. Holy Spirit, come. In Luke, the fourth chapter, 20 minutes of teaching. I'm going to cut this. In Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 18, Jesus makes a statement that gives us the purpose for him coming to earth. Luke 4 and 18, Jesus makes a statement and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Stay with me, y'all. Stay with me. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim, preach liberty to the captives, the recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Do y'all realize that the acceptable year of the Lord is for us? This is the year for us to emerge. Here it comes, y'all. Let me teach for one second. Here is a perfect picture of the demonstration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Pay attention. The word gospel means good news. Ladies and gentlemen, the good news of the kingdom, listen to this. It is being demonstrated and shown when these things happen. Here it comes. When the sinner hears the gospel, repents, and gives his life to Jesus. The gospel is being demonstrated. When the broken gets made whole, the gospel is being demonstrated. When the confused gets filled with the peace of God, the gospel is being demonstrated. When the defeated gets victorious, the gospel is being demonstrated. When the sick gets healed, the gospel is being demonstrated. When the eyes of the blind are opening by prayer and the Holy Spirit moving, the gospel is being demonstrated. When the lost finds truth that leads to a lifestyle of purpose and peace, the gospel is being demonstrated. When the impoverished gets prosperous, the gospel is being demonstrated. When the addicted gets delivered, the gospel is being demonstrated. When the rejected gets accepted, the gospel is being demonstrated when the hungry gets filled and gets fed. The gospel is being demonstrated when the condemned gets converted and filled with godly confidence. The gospel is being demonstrated when the guilty conscience of the believer gets cleansed. The gospel is being demonstrated when the divorced couples reconciles their marriage and try it all over again. The gospel is being demonstrated when people in darkness find light. The gospel. Is being demonstrated. People of God, well, let me ask you one question. When the gospel gets demonstrated, who do you think is doing the demonstration? Thank you, Katrina. It's not a trick question. The Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Week three, the function of the Holy Spirit. Anytime you see the true gospel of Jesus Christ being demonstrated, being manifested. It's the Holy Spirit who is doing it. Jesus says in John 6, 6, 6, 6, 6 44, he says, no man can come to me unless the Spirit of the Lord draws him. So may I submit to you, contrary to popular belief, the Holy Spirit, listen to me, the Holy Spirit needs you. He needs your eye. Come on, Katrina. He needs you and he needs I in order for the gospel to be demonstrated. If the spirit of the living God don't have a body to flow through, he cannot demonstrate the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is illegal, Francesca, for a spirit to operate on the earth if a spirit don't have a body. Demonic spirit or Holy Spirit? A spirit needs a body to function through. So when the demonic is being demonstrated by negativity, why? Because the demonic has a spirit to float. So there is a combat 
When the demonic is in somebody demonstrated negativity and demonic things, the Holy Spirit needs a body that he can get in to demonstrate heavenly things. Are you with me? Are you with me? Listen, listen to me. Jesus said in John 16 and 7, he says, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Watch this, Ridge. That word expedient, you know what it means? It means profitable. It is profitable for me to go away. The disciples like, hold, hold up, hold on. We seeing stuff we ain't never seen before in our lives. Signs, miracles, wonders. And you mean to tell me, you telling us it is profitable for us, for you to go away? The devil is a lie. Why do you think Peter tried to cut the man's ear off when they came to take Jesus down the judgment hall so he can be crucified? Because Jesus is telling them, it is profitable that I go away. And you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to hold on. Just keep that, keep that in your heart to Sunday. It's a dangerous thing to hold on to something when God is trying to make you let it go. Jesus knew, here it comes, that he could not fulfill the role of the Holy Spirit. Did y'all hear what I just said? Jesus knew, I can't fulfill the role of the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew this. I'm a man in a body that's immersed in the Spirit of God, but I'm limited. I can't be but in one place. Even though he's God and he can, he can do all the things God doing, but he's confined himself to one place. But Jesus knew this. The Holy Spirit can be in every place at all times and he could be in every believer. It is profitable. Teach, boy. For me to pay the penalty for sin. Because if I don't do this, then he cannot be released in you. So it is more profitable for you that I go away. This is the problem. You've gotten so used to me that you don't know him. Jesus is trying to show them literally. What I'm doing, Keisha, he said in John 14, greater works will you do. How? Jesus never lied. He never sinned. How could Jesus, how could he say, Reggie, greater works will you do? Katrina, greater works will you do? AJ, greater works will you do? Jesus says, greater works will you do than me? This is what Jesus prophesied. How could Jesus say that you're going to do greater works? And Jesus it's just, 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 just wrecking the entire world. May I submit to y'all? I, I, we, don't, AJ, I don't care what nobody say. We don't value the Holy Spirit to the degree that we're supposed to be valuing the Holy Spirit. This is Bible right here. Jesus said, "Greater works shall you do, because I'm going to my fall. The same Spirit that's on me, my God." He wants to function in and through you. So you know what the enemy knew? The enemy knew if the church ever get a hold to this Holy Spirit. Hear me if they ever get the hold of this Holy Spirit. And the functions of what the Holy Spirit is allowed to do in you and through you, may I submit to you that you are going to be a direct enemy to hell. You are going to be a direct bomb to hell. You are going to be a direct ambassador for heaven. And may I submit to you, all the hell will tremble when you understand how the Holy Spirit functions. Here it comes. 
We know this. We know how he functioned for you. We don't know how he functions through you. I feel like running. I feel like running. See, see, we so used to God give me. God give me. God do this. We so used to the full. Ain't nobody getting trained about through. He's in you. When a man receives Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes into his spirit. He regenerates his spirit. He adopts us into the family of God and the Holy Spirit. A measure of us get filled. Now right, watch this. If we don't present our bodies as a living sacrifice, we can be filled and the Holy Spirit won't function. Did you hear what I just said? You can be filled with the Spirit, but the Spirit can't even function. You can be filled with the Spirit, but the Spirit can't even flow. You can be filled with the... Why you say that, Pastor Jane? Because you can be filled with the Spirit, but when unclean thoughts are trapping your mind, the Holy Spirit can't flow. Because your mind is not on the things of God. Peter, get behind me, Satan, because your mind is not on the things of God. So if your mind is not on the things of God, then he can't flow. He can't function. May I submit to you, I didn't found eight, nine functions of the Holy Spirit for the night. But I promise you, if I keep going, I could find some more. Let me, let me tell you the functions of the Holy Spirit. Number one, he's an advocate. Number two, he's a comforter. Number three, he's a counselor. Number four, he's a guide. Number five, he's a helper. Number six, he's an intercessor. Number seven, he's a standby. Number eight, he's a strengthener. Number nine, he's a teacher. This is what he does through. Not just for. Catch this. Through. I'm telling you at Bible study tonight, the Holy Spirit needs you to flow through. But if you don't care, or if you don't press, or if you don't find out how, when, where, what, you will continue to come to church and say, I'll receive it. And you're like, Lord, bless me. Sometimes he does. But what he's trying to do is move through. The Bible says, he says, try me and see in Malachi. He says, listen to this now. He says, try me and see. Bring all the tithes to the storehouse. This is what I don't, I don't know how in the world folks missed this, but I caught this. He said this, try me and see. Watch this. And see, if I don't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Did y'all catch that? I don't know if you caught it though. He said this, pour you out a blessing. You, she called it. You thinking he talking about pouring you out. Here you go, here you go. Uh uh he says, I wanna pour. I'm trying to, the blessing, if the God of the universe lives inside of us, he's trying to pour. Look at me, hey, hey, this Bible, and this, this ain't me making up nothing. He says, I want to pour you. You is, you, all you're concerned about is pouring you out, pouring this out, pouring this out. You thinking he's going to open it up and say, here you go. He says, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not in meat or drink, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the kingdom is in the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Where's the Holy Ghost? He's in you. He's trying to pour you. Trying to pour you out. Why? Because all the righteousness, all the promises of God are in him and they are yes and amen. The Holy Spirit is not trying to be a river. He's not trying to be a lake. He's trying to be a river that flows. A lake just sits, but a river flows into streams. But if he can't pour you out, the Holy Spirit is in you. He's trying to pour you out. So the Holy Spirit functions. He acts as an advocate. In the Greek, the word parakletos means uh, 
I mean, the only degree, the Holy Spirit means parakletos. And the first function of the parakletos is an advocate. The assignment of the advocate is this. Watch this. One who pleads another's cause. In the advocate stage, the first cause that he pleads for you, Bridget, he plead, he's an advocate for your forgiveness. The reason why I keep coming back to guilt, fear, condemnation, shame, is because the believer has to understand that I'm loved by God. I've been forgiven by God. I am a new creation in God. And I am the righteousness of God. The same way unclean thoughts have filled up some people's mind, these thoughts need to fill your mind. I am loved by God. I am forgiven by God. I am a new creation in God. I am the righteousness of God. And every single time, Reuben, I make a mistake, guess who's beside me in heaven pleading my cause? The job of the Holy Spirit Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Sharon, Dr. Sharon Nesbitt going to be at the Freedom Conference. And she said one of the things she's going to be teaching and she's going to be giving revelation about the courts of heaven. She started talking about the courts of heaven. And I was like, my God, the courts of heaven. My mind started rolling. And I'm like, yeah, because Satan was kicked out of heaven. And when Satan was kicked up out of heaven, may I submit to you, it wasn't no reason why Satan should be able to come back in heaven. But the Bible says in Job that Satan start roaming the earth. And God says, Satan, you've been roaming to and fro the earth looking to see who you can find. He comes up to heaven to make the statement. What part of heaven could Satan get in if he got kicked out? Could it be possible that he's in the courts? Why is he in the courts, Pastor Jay? Because in the courts, you got to have a, a lawyer and a prosecutor. So if the Holy Spirit is the advocate, he's my attorney. Pleading my cause. Satan is known as the accuser of the brethren. He comes before the throne night and day presenting the case to prosecute you. But when the blood of Jesus is over you, the advocate pleads the cause. I wish I would have had the Holy Ghost in my court room, in my court case. But maybe he would have declared me not guilty. But, but yeah, he may be in. But, but can I, can I, we laughing, but I'm going to give y'all some real raw truth. For me, I don't know about you, but I'm talking for me. I wasn't under the blood. I could act like I was under the blood. But I knew in my heart I wasn't saved. I don't know about you, but I'm talking about me. And I'm 27 years old at this point. I wasn't saved as far as, let me start. So I tried to use God. I tried to use the Holy Spirit to be my advocate. I give my life to Jesus. I, I'm making my personal Lord and Savior. Yeah, I'm going to heaven. I need him to plead my call. For me, I ain't talking about you. May I submit to you. And then maybe he may have pled my cause, but maybe he already knew I still needed to suffer the consequences. Are you with me? But the point is, it's the Holy Spirit's assignment, here it comes, to let you know no more guilt, no more fear, no more shame, no more regret, Grant. It's all under the blood if I keep feeding myself about what I did I cannot be who he's calling me to be so he's an advocate that ain't never lost a court case hear me the regret is dismissed the, hey, 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 the confusion the headache the heartache he even threw it out of the court case. Y'all, he threw it out. It's over. The condemnation is done. There is therefore now, Francesca, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because he is an advocate. The second, the second term or function of the paracletos is, here it comes. He's a comforter. Sabrina, where are you at? He is a comforter. 
here it comes. Tonight, can I tell y'all how he comforted me? Through his presence. He comforts through a prophetic word. He comforts through his presence. Second Corinthians, the uh, first chapter, three through five, David Wall. Put it in TPT right fast. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some things. Jesus says we are in the world, but we are not of the world. He says, in this world, you're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. There are some things that you and I are going to face in this lifetime that if God don't come put his hand on you to just touch you and let he let you know that I'm with you and I got you, ladies and gentlemen, we can lose our minds. Are you with me? So watch this. When, when we think we need a word from somebody, may I submit to you, the Holy Spirit knows exactly when, how, where, at the perfect time to breathe on you, to comfort you. His assignment, watch this, man, it just, it, it, y'all know how the old folks used to say, they, I used to think this was in the Bible, but I never found it nowhere. But people used to say, he ain't going to put no more on you than you can bear. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember, I heard that all my life. And I was looking for it in the Bible when I was in prison, but it wasn't there. Right? And I'm like, he ain't going to ever put no more on me than I can bear. See, but nobody ever told me that he was in me. And whatever it is that is on me, because he's in me, I can bear it. Are you with me? Every now and then, I got to open up the word and read the word so the word start breathing me. And so then, as I'm bearing, I can get comforted. Are you with me? Are you with me? So the Holy Spirit acts as a comforter. Here it comes. He can only comfort when you are in agreement. Can, can, come, come, come here. Come here. See, because what the enemy will do is, he will talk to us about what's so bad. And we'll agree with what's so bad for so long that we are Xing out the comfort. And sometimes we'll talk about, and well, sometimes we think about what's so bad for so long and we don't really, really want the comfort because we want somebody to feel sorry for us or we want God to come get us out of it right then, right? And God ain't, ain't instantly moving right then because he's trying to mature you through something. Here he comes again. You want him to move for you, but he's trying to do something because if he do it through me, the same one that comforted me, now I am equipped to comfort somebody else when they get in the situation. So God don't always just come snatch me out. He leaves me in to show me some while many. May I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the, the Lord said this, he let me know this years ago. If your mind is so focused on what you are going through, you cannot focus and see what I have for you while you are in it. May I submit to you that it's hard for you to get wisdom if you are always focused on getting out. There is something in whatever you're going through. If God don't move instantly, it's time for you to start looking for the nuggets. Are you with me? Stop looking so much about the end and start looking down to see what I can pick up. Because every single day, it is a walk day in and day out. And when God don't instantly get you out, I'm telling you, he's trying to stir something in you. And he's saying, I can comfort you enough because I need the pressure and the pain to stay here so you can stay focused on what I'm doing in you. Believers, we are forgetting but the God of the universe is living on the inside of us. And watch this. What I can't change, Tasha Dearborn, I got to learn how to endure. What I cannot change, I have to learn how to endure. Because if I don't endure, Angelique, I'm going to quit. And if I quit, people can't see that the God of the universe is living on the inside of me. So as I'm going through, I need to change my focus. I'm so focused on my feelings, I can't even move my faith. I'm so focused on my feelings, I can't even get the weight of wisdom. Are you with me? The Lord showed me that, Katrina, years ago. You, you Stop focusing on the end. I know you want to get out. But if you get out and you're not equipped, you won't be able to add value to nobody else. While I'm in it, I'm going to comfort you just a little bit so you can get the nuggets. 
this is the reason why pain is never without a purpose with him. I'm making any sense. I'm making any sense. It is something in the pain. He says, I'm going to comfort you just a little bit because I need you to get something out of the situation. I know it hurts. But I'm teaching you how to see it. Because if your perspective don't change, all your perspective is on, on how I get out. God, get me out. The only prayer it is, I need deliverance. I need an open door. I need this. I need this. You ain't even realizing that there are some principles in this, man, that's not only going to open the door, but when you get out, it's going to accelerate you to the next dimension instantly. Why get out and you can't soar? Why get out and your mind is still stuck in? Why get out of the situation but your mind is still stuck in the situation? Katrina, this means you are delivered but you're not free. And the only reason you're not free is because you didn't get what you needed to get. I feel the Holy Spirit just running right now. Am I making any sense? Yeah, so the mature believers got to know, all right, of course, whenever I run into whatever I run into, ran into a tragedy. Ran into a crisis. Ran into a storm. And I got to pay attention. How long I've been in it? It's been lasting about a month. Can I see my way out? I really don't see no way out. Okay. Now start paying attention what you can get out of it. I need somebody to hear this on the night. This is for, I know I hear God as clear as day. This is for somebody. You've been focused so hard on getting out. You can't see what I have for you while you're in. Are you with me? It is something that I got for you that's going to open the door. The keys is on the inside right now. And you're trying to get somebody to unlock it from the outside. But I got some wisdom for you to unlock it from the inside. Am I making any sense? Am I making any sense? This is the reason why sometimes man, when God, when we're going through some stuff and he's calling us to endure in this there is character in it also are you with me sometimes the blessing ain't gonna be instantly when we walk in with him this thing gonna be progressively and you got to know he's the God that comforts 2 Corinthians 2 1 3 through 5 y'all read it for yourself tonight it's gonna say pretty much everything I just said it's gonna say all of that in that verse but I just gave it to you in James that was ghetto gangster style you got me just seriously for real that's how I gave it to you but re, but I, I'm, I'm serious I want y'all to check this out 2 Corinthians first chapter 3 through 5 TPT third the third function of the paracletos here it comes he's a counselor He's a counselor, y'all. Here it comes. Isaiah 11, 1 and 2 says, 2 and 3 says, And the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of strength, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He said the spirit of counsel. Counselor. Here, here it comes. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said this, my sheep hear my voice. They know it. They follow me. In crunch time situations, sometimes your pastor got the right answer for you. But a lot of times when your pastor don't have the right answer for you, it's an invitation for you to have a meeting with the Holy Spirit yourself. Sometimes... God don't let people give you what you need because he wants to give it to you himself. When you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and you know you know how to hear his voice, when you are in whatever you are in, he begins to counsel. May I submit to you that there is a major difference between good advice and God advice. Good advice is the advice that a normal person would give you based on the knowledge, the reasoning, the analytical structure, the data, the situation. You come to me, tell me your problem. Nine times out of ten, I may give you good advice. But that don't necessarily mean that it is God's advice. The difference between good advice and God advice is I give you the right, I say the right stuff, but it ain't for you. It may be for your neighbor next to you, but it ain't for you. The God 
kind of advice is I'm talking to you, Dale Trees, about your situation, your circumstances, everything that's happening for you and which way your life is going. I'm not just saying something because it's the right thing to say. May I submit to you that the worst enemy to the God kind of advice is good advice? Because when you hear good advice, you X out God's advice because it makes sense to you. The devil, all he's trying to do to deceive you sometimes is make it make sense to you. When it makes sense to you, then you can run behind it. And when you run behind what makes sense, sometimes that ain't God. Anytime you want to ask everybody else about your problem, you don't want to go to the Holy Spirit, you already behind the eight ball. You run to me, you run to your mama, you run to your best friend, you run to whoever, you are already in a dangerous situation when the first thing you don't do is go to prayer. Right? So, so, so let me, let, let me, when the Lord started really, really dealing with me about the presence of God in my personal private place, this was probably around about 2009, 2010, when the Lord started grooming me in the presence, every single time I had a problem, I would run to one of my mentors. And one day, one of my mentors said, and one day, one of my mentors said this. He said, James, this is the last day you're going to be able to come to me with your problems. I said, what? He said, you heard what I said. This is the last day you're going to be able to come to me with all these problems. I've been hearing this stuff for the last six months. And God told me to tell you, stop running to me, run to him. I said, okay. Bet. I felt slighted a little bit, but I knew it was the spirit of God that was on it. And so watch this, y'all. Y'all y'all know how we be using these terms in the presence. The presence of God. This, that, and other. And for a lot of you, you hear this stuff and it's just an environment. And you hear it you think you know what it is. You just go on about your business. You just doing life. You don't really, really discover the presence until you enter some stuff. You don't really, really know how to really seek him until you really get in some stuff. When you start looking. And, and so Psalms 46 and 10 was one of the verses for me. He, said, he says, be still. So I started trying to figure out how do I get counsel from God? And the Lord said, watch this. One day the Lord spoke to me. He says, not only be still, but be silent. When you be still and be silent, watch this. Stuff on the inside of you called the flesh starts getting very loud. If you can't handle yourself, don't move. Be quiet. Be prepared to eliminate unclean thoughts. Be still. Be silent. For some time, God may not show up. Sometimes, he wants you to get control of you, spirit soul and body so he says be still right now let's practice on don't nobody move don't nobody say nothing kill the kill that whole kill everything for 30 seconds nobody just getting don't move don't don't turn don't do nothing just be still question. Did it feel weird to somebody? Talk to me. Talk, talk to me. Felt weird, didn't it? You, you know why? You probably ain't never done that. And so what the Spirit is trying to tell you to do, well, I mean, what, your, what your flesh is trying to say, look up. Look around. Do something. What the enemy is trying to do is, watch this, God trying to show you how you can get control. When you get control in your mind and stillness, watch this, the Holy Spirit do not fight with all kind of thoughts. When you settle yourself in stillness, you get quiet, you silent, here it comes. The voice of God came to Elijah how? In a still, 
small voice. This is nothing to be afraid of. I'm trying to show y'all how to really seek him. I'm trying to show y'all how to stop running to every therapist and everybody else and counselors, this, that, and other. I'm trying to show you how to get into the presence yourself. It's nothing wrong with starting with worship first. It ain't nothing wrong with adoration and all this. But there comes a point when you need to hear the voice of God and you get still. No movement. So one day the Holy Spirit had me put my hands up under my legs. I'm laid out. Stretched out. Don't move. Get control. Um, he's teaching us how to kill the flesh. The spirit cannot talk if the flesh is alive. Right? Spirit of God do come through my voice and teaching, but I'm talking about in your personal time. I'm trying to teach you how he moved through you. Stillness. Be quiet. Watch this. When the voice comes and it's full of peace, it's full of love, it's full of, it can be conviction, truth, there are certain attributes that the Holy Spirit carries. And you know without a shadow of a doubt, that ain't me. That's him. For me, can I go where I run the road and go? It amazed me when everybody said they can hear the voice of God, but they can't steal themselves. I heard God say this. I heard God say that. But if you tell them to practice stillness, they'll look at you like you lost your mind. May I submit to you? I'm talking Bible now. The first avenue when God is speaking is stillness and silence. They are two different things. You can be still and not be silent. You can be still and still talking, hearing some. Stillness and silence. Well, how did I get here, y'all? The Holy Spirit is trying to tell somebody directly, I want to speak to you. The reason why some of you, he can't speak to you until you start dreaming is because that's where you still and silent. And he's saying, I'm asking you, to put some time aside just for me and you. Right? Another thing. Did you, did you, did you, listen to me seriously now. Did you feel a presence when you closed your eyes? Did you feel like a presence, like something around you? This is the, I'm, 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 I'm telling y'all, he's a spirit being that has a soul that needs a body to get in. He's around. Holy Spirit, come like yeah, yeah. When we, I'm about to pray for y'all. I'm, I'm about to do this, but I'm telling you, I don't know how I even got into this, <laughs> this, this counseling. Like, seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so hungry to hear counsel from people because we are afraid to hear the counsel from God. We say we want it, but we ain't really got time to be still. We ain't got time to be silent. We got so much going on and so much... And so, do you realize that busyness can be an idol? I'm going to say it one more time. Busyness can be an idol. You're so busy for your life that it has become an idol to you. It runs you. You can't just sit aside. Be quiet. Calm your mind. Steal your spirit. Silence your mouth. Can I tell y'all what that demonstrates? Trust him. Any questions? I'm gone. I'm out of this. I got four more things. We'll come back next week. I feel the spirit of God too strong right now. Any questions? I mean it. I'm serious. I'm serious. I want to answer a few questions. And it ain't nothing weird about what I'm telling you. When all of them, y'all, y'all listen to me now. The Bible says, mark the first chapter. Jesus got up. A great while before day, and he went into the wilderness to do what? Pray. Everybody is looking for him. He's in a place of stillness. He said, I never do nothing until I hear my, I see my father do it. I never say anything until I hear my father say it. He set time aside so that the spirit of the Lord could counsel him talking relationship. I ain't talking religion. I ain't making any sense. The Lord wants to speak some stuff to you that will change the trajectory of your life now. You may feel like you've lost in a whole lot of areas. You may feel like you're behind in a whole lot of areas in one word. 
will shift your entire dimension of your life when you know how to position yourself to hear him. All right? I position myself by killing the flesh. Thoughts, desires, actions, memories, imaginations that are motivated by selfishness. Stop. Nobody but God right now. Any questions, y'all? Yeah, I am. We're going to pray for him. Let me ask questions first. Anybody got any questions? Just truly believe. Yeah, what's the question? Hold on. He's giving the microphone to you. When you get still, mm -hmm. but your mind still has. Yeah, that's it. That's all I've been trying to say the entire time. That's what happens. So, so. So, so let me let me ask y'all a question. Have y'all ever noticed somebody that's always doing something? Look at my feet. They always doing something. Just always doing something. Right? Then finally, when they stop and still, or just rocking. You know, some people some people just, yeah, just some folks just rock. You know, just yeah, I'm serious. Watch this. Then when you just get still, you close your eyes, start moving, then like you say. My mind just get wild. May I submit to you? You know what this means? Your mind is in full control of you. And God is trying to show you, get control of your mind so I can come in and talk. It's a practice. AJ is called practicing the presence. So when I start moving or do something, I just reset. Practice. Right? I'm trying to teach y'all how to hear God. The greatest thing I can do as your pastor is teach you how to hear him. I can promise you, if you learn how to hear God, your life will shift. The greatest compliment that you can ever give me is, Pastor James, you taught me how to hear God. My mentor that told me, don't come to me with that no more. You finna learn how to hear God for yourself. The greatest thing he did for me, Bobby Smith, North Carolina, I'm in uh, Nebraska, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. He said, James, you ain't finna keep coming to me every day with this. You finna hear God for yourself. That was the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life. He made me get in pursuit. How can I say I'm confident as a believer when I can't hear my father? Right? How in the world I'm gonna call myself a prophet to a nation and I don't know exactly what I need to do in order to get to him? Some folks just be talking. Like real talk. Right? And, and he just in private. He shows up in private. So you don't have to worry about him not showing up in public. Are you with me? So, so Elsa, to answer your question, when your mind start rolling, now that lets you know your mind got you. And you got to get control of your mind. Here it comes. You cannot control the thoughts that come. But you can control the thoughts you feed. I'm going to say it one more time. You cannot control the thoughts that come, but you can control the thoughts you feed. So now, watch this. I need me a scripture. I need me something to fight back in my mind. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Y'all better get you some word in you. Psalms 1 and 1. You better get you some word in you. Are you with me? Yeah, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the, beginning, in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And there is, ladies and gentlemen, you got to get some word in you when that start happening. Because what happens is when crazy stuff start coming and you start thinking the word, now you are creating a pathway for the solid rainbow to come through. You got me? Practice. Practice. You can't have no peace if your mind running like crazy. Talk to me. You ain't got no peace. If when you do that, your mind just take off running and you can't control it, you ain't got no peace. No, you, you don't. You don't, man, you don't have it. Right? It can be circumstantial, meaning you can come to a place like this, the presence of God moving, you can feel the peace. But as soon as you get out the presence, that peace gone. Man, how did I get out here tonight? Like, I did not mean to. I promise you I didn't. Right? Yeah, I think the Lord is trying to, I think he's trying to enlarge in our territory. Y'all know the prayer of Jabez, Lord, enlarging my territory. He's trying to enlarge in your spiritual capacity. 
right? So you can have, I think he's stretching it because on the things that are coming, you need to be able to have the type of weight that can handle what's about to be planted. Yeah, get control. Any question? Hold on one second. Somebody, we online. Um, her question resonated with me when I was having a lot of uh, tumultuous times. Um, the scripture cast down every uh, thought and every yep. imagination. That was one of the verses that the Spirit of God had me going to because um, it also praying that the Spirit of God will 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 help me to um, to be aware because sometimes your mind can be going and you really don't even know mm -hmm. that your mind is going. And then you have to call yourself. You the more that you the more you call it call it out and bring it to yourself, the more you kind of you know it's exercising that option to practice. Are you with me? Are you? So, and so yeah, you're absolutely right. It's 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 you. The next thing the enemy gonna do in the middle of this is this. He gonna make you think you crazy. He coming at you with crazy thoughts. Fool, you didn't lost your mind. You can't hear God like that. Man, you might well go do this, go do that. You getting every other suggestion to break the training. You see what I'm saying? And the Lord, all he's trying to do is, listen to me, he's trying to get you to get control of you. Yeah. You can control you. Yeah. When you are emotionally led, you don't believe so. So when you close your eyes, the feeling starts jumping. And the feeling starts trying to move you. And sometimes you got to say, devil, shut up. I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm not moving. I'm remaining still. And this is one way to memorize scripture, for real. Before you do it, grab a scripture, put it in your mind, then meditate. Meditate means to roll over, to muse, over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. And then, watch this. Start doing, start doing, start doing what we, just, what we just did. Give yourself realistic goals. For you, Miss Elsie, say you're going to practice mastering this for 30 seconds. You can't make it two minutes. Because as soon as you did it, your mind just took off. Right? Medit I promise y'all, this is the way you get peace too. I promise you. You want him to be strong for you. He's a strengthener. I'm going to get to that. This is what's happening. If he's in you, he got to break through. Right? Yeah. I, I know y'all, yeah, you hear about what to do, but you need to learn how to do it too. So I'm trying to teach you how to practice the presence. Yeah. Any other questions? Ain't nothing to be afraid of tonight. We usually have a thousand questions. I'm talking about bed. The room is kind of like. Ready for you to pray. I am, yeah. <laughs> so you, I, one, I like the way Absolutely. you break down words. I'm a person who is big on words and definitions. Yes, ma'am. And there's one that you talked about when I got baptized about being saved. Uh -huh. ED on the end of that word means past tense. Past tense, yeah. What are the steps of like, I am being, like saving, okay. I am being saved, being I am calls. going through the process. That's the question. Your soul is saved. I mean, your spirit, I'm sorry. Your spirit is saved. He's in you, it's over. Locked in, you become one. Your soul is being saved. Being, right? So when I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is my reasonable service, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind. As I'm renewing my mind, my soul is going from the old to the new. Being. My body, when I die, my resurrected body, when I get to heaven, will be saved. Make sense? Yes. Yeah, so, so every day, this is why I say, if, I'm, if I got unclean thoughts, and I'm continuing to feed myself unclean thoughts. My soul is not being saved. My soul is being cemented in digression, in uncleanness. But my spirit is saved. It's done. It's over with. All I got to do is keep loving Jesus. Right? But I can keep loving Jesus and be going to heaven, but living in hell on earth. Because I am, my soul is being and I'm not having the responsibility, and I'm not taking up the responsibility to keep growing, to keep hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Catch the inverse, by the word of God. 
Because faith can come in crazy other words too. If you keep hearing. Keep hearing about Diddy. Just keep it up. Right? You'll get more carnal. You'll get more immature. You'll get more ignorant. And you'll be coming to church every single Sunday saying, the Lord going to bless me, going to bring me out. The Lord, like I've been trying, but you keep putting yourself back in. Yeah, because you keep hearing the wrong thing. You keep feeding yourself the wrong thing. Guard your heart. Yeah, it's, it's going to cost you some. It's gonna, this is what he means when he says suffering in the flesh. When he's suffering, you are pulling off the thoughts that are motivated by selfishness. It feels good to be in the know of what's happening in the world because you feel him. You feel a part of them. Yeah, when you, 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 you know, when you, one day you own, the next day y'all. When you, when you ain't all the way sold out, it feel good. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, when I start hearing certain stuff, after about 15 seconds, it start irking me. Let me hurry up and get away from this. I'm serious. Why? Because I've died today. Galatians 2 and 20. Are you with me? I've crucified myself in Christ. Am I making sense? And it's a day-to-day -day basis. So, but if you ain't totally crucified it, oh, and that thing alive, when you feed it, it wants some more. The flesh don't get enough. Selfishness don't get enough. Are you with me? And he's saying, do like, what, what I just taught you, that's how you crucify it. Stillness. Silence. Kill it. Get control. Any other questions? Everybody good? Who need prayer tonight? Okay, all right. To everybody that's in the sound more ball voice, let me take the offering, and I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to pray. Pastor Wagner, you're going to help me. Uh, Reuben, you're going to help me. Y'all going to help me pray. But uh, I I'm going to pray. Hey, go over there and get Marcus. Tell Marcus to get over here. Tell him to kill everything, if y'all don't mind. Tell Marcus, to, tell Marcus and Jennifer to get over here. Yep. Holy Spirit of God, come. Thank you. You can practice now, eyes closed, be still. Holy Spirit touches. Let a wave begin to flow in this room. Let a wave of deliverance, let a wave of healing, let a wave of wholeness, let a wave of breakthrough begin to stir, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds to hear your voice for deliverance for breakthrough for the start of freedom Holy Spirit thank you for sending angels of his presence angels of healing angels of deliverance to rush the room right now in the mighty name of Jesus we bind the hand of the enemy we plead the blood and we say heaven come Satan, the blood is against you. You said that you gave him a name that was above all names, that at the name of Jesus, depression has to bow. At the name of Jesus, defeat has to bow. At the name of Jesus, frustration has to bow. At the name of Jesus, sin and fear has to bow. Holy Spirit, come. Touch. In Jesus' name. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, you can give right now by going to dollar sign, transforming faith. You can text TFCC to the number 77977 to give. If you have an envelope and you want to give by, by cash tonight, I mean, if you want to give by cash, we have an envelope. We have Sister Lanisa right here to pass out the envelopes. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice on TikTok, on YouTube, you can go to dollar sign, transforming faith. I sent, the Bible says in Psalms 107 and 20, he says, I sent the word to heal thee. I send the word of healing. I send the word of restoration. I send the word of deliverance. I send the word of breakthrough. I feel the spirit of the Lord on the night. And I truly believe some people are about to be touched by the power of God. I send it to your life. Healing to your heart. Healing to your mind. Healing to your memories. I, I bind in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, every unclean thought, 
I bind it right now and I command it be broke right now in Jesus' name. Leave their minds. Don't come back in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come to everybody that's under the sound of my voice. In, that's in the audience. You can give right here. You can go to Dollar Sign, Transforming Faith. You can go to Dollar Sign. You can text TFCC to the number 77977. I want to challenge everybody to sow a $20 seed into this word on tonight. And we are getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to have ministry. I just truly believe some stuff is about to be broke one tonight. And I am so excited about what the Lord is getting ready to do for the Freedom Conference. I'm so excited about what the Lord is getting ready to do right here um, this Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, he died, but he got up. He died, but he got up. And in Jesus' name, because he got up, you're going to get up too. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, meet us this Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. Meet us this Sunday. We're going to talk about how the, how the deception goes along with resurrection. Yeah, fresh revelation. Fresh manna from the presence of the throne. Resurrection is always going to overpower that deception. If you can do one thing, don't get offended. Just don't get offended. And the deception will never overpower the resurrection. In Jesus' name. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, we honor you, we celebrate you, we love you, we appreciate you. Y'all have a good night. We bless you. To everybody that needs prayer, we about to get everything out of the way, and we about to minister. Bless y'all. Have a good one. You take whatever you